Welcome to 8.1's Math Moment. Today in fifth grade, students worked with metric um, it, within the metric system and they talked about lengths. So they were only working with the basic unit meter um, and they were converting between kilometers, hectometers, centimeters, millimeters, and all of the different ones that are in the metric system. So they used the mnemonic device King, Hector, or Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. And what we have them use that for is to help them convert between um, different units of length um, in order to find different um, equations and solve problems. So we encour encourage them to write down the letters in a line and we show them how to move the decimal in different directions and how many spaces to help them convert between one unit of measure and another. So let's look at an example. It says 607 centimeters equals how many meters? So what we have students do is start with what they have a number for. For instance, here I have a number for centimeters. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with centimeters. Then I want to go to meters. Now notice, meters um, so students sometimes get confused and think that they should move this direction, but this is for millimeters, which you'll see in the next example has two M's. If it just has one M, that is the basic unit, which is actually our U. So sometimes that takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of reminding to help students remember that if it's just one M, they're looking for that basic unit, just the meter. So I have 607 centimeters and I want to move to meters. So that's one, two jumps, all right? So I always make a little note that I'm gonna move two spaces, and then I'm moving this way. So I make a little arrow drawing where I'm moving to which direction. What students can do from there is have a decimal point, and on a whole number, a decimal point is always at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over here so you can see it more easily. And all I have to do then is follow my notes. I'm gonna move two spaces that way. One, two, for a final answer of six and seven hundred meters. So again, another way to explain that to students is we have these arrows that are moving across um, the bottom and across the top. The one that's moving across the bottom is showing anything moving to the left of the diagram. The one on the top is anything moving to the right. To the left of the diagram, we're making the unit smaller by dividing by powers of 10. Moving the other direction to the right, we're making them larger by powers of 10. So that's another way to explain it. They could divide and multiply by tens, hundreds, thousands, but we find that students enjoy the strategy of just moving the decimal point um, in order to make those conversions more simple. So let's look at another example. Here I have six and 8,900 centimeters, and I want to move to millimeters. So again, we start on the diagram with what I have a number for. And in this problem, I again have a number for centimeters. So I'm gonna start with centimeters, and I'm going to move to millimeters. Notice that this has an extra M, so I'm actually moving to the milli side this time. That's gonna be one space, and I'm moving to the right. So I make an arrow that way. I'm gonna rewrite my number with my decimal point, and then I'm gonna move my decimal point one space to the right for a final answer of 68 and 9 tenths. Students also took the information that they learned with conversions today and applied it to word problems, so that's what we're gonna look at in example two. It says, on the first day of a three-day trip, Gabe rode 345 kilometers, the second day, 78.2, or 78 and 2 tenths kilometers. And on day three, he rode 876 meters. How many kilometers did Gabe ride in all? So what's really important to notice here is we've got lots of information, but most of my information, two out of the three numbers are in kilometers, one is in meters. The answer needs to be in kilometers. So. I would encourage students to make a quick table and note that I've got one, two, three days. On day one, it was 345 kilometers. On day two, it was 78 and 2 tenths kilometers. And on day three, it was 876 meters. Now when I'm looking here, I notice that number one, on day one and day two, they're already in kilometers, so I don't have to change them to kilometers because they already are kilometers. 
but I will have to work with the 876 meters and change that to kilometers before I can go ahead and, um, excuse me, and add them all together to figure out how many kilometers he rode in all. So I'm first gonna start with what I have a number for, which is meters, and I'm going to note how many times it takes me to move to kilometers and what direction. So I'm moving one, two, three, so I need to move three spaces, and I was moving to the left. So I'm going to start where there would be a decimal on a whole number, which is always at the end. And I'm going to move one, two, three spaces to the left for a final answer of 876 thousandths kilometers. So now that I have all three days in kilometers, it's going to be very easy to go ahead and add those up. Now students will need to remember that when they are adding with decimals, they have to line up the decimal point, even if that means they need to add some zeros to the front or back to help them line up all of the numbers. So zero plus zero is six, zero plus zero is seven, or excuse me, plus seven is seven, zero plus two is two, plus eight is 10, carry the one, bring down my decimal point. Eight plus five is 13, plus one is 14, carry the one, 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 1 is 12, carry the 1, 3 plus 1 is 4. For a final answer of 424 and 76 thousandths kilometers, which is a lot to take on a ride. All right, if you have any other questions about Lesson 8.1, make sure to see your math teacher.